Hi everyone, it's Monica with Advice to Think Twice. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, nice to see you all, so to speak. Um, I hope that everyone's doing well. I just wanted to do a little video and try to answer uh, some of the questions that I've received um, since I started my channel and all of that. Um, and, you know, I thought it's a good option, it's a good idea, you know, in terms of um, letting you get to know me a little bit better, okay, if, um, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, I'm really a very private person, so I don't like to, you know, be out there everywhere and um, everyone knowing <laughs> who I am, what I do, and everything like that, okay. Um, so that's why I haven't done this before. Um, at the same time, though, um, a lot of you, you know, if you're a subscriber or if you just follow my channel or you follow me on social media, okay, um, you have been with me for a while and uh, I do appreciate the support. And so um, I just wanted to let you get to know me a little bit better, okay, because you are always so great and you're always sharing your stories with me uh, on, you know, with comments on the channel or even with all the private readings, okay, that I'm really, really grateful and honored to be able to do because it's not an easy thing to do, you know, for someone to share their experience with you and to come to you when they're vulnerable and all of that. So I do appreciate that. And so I thought um, I should give you a bit of a better idea uh, of who I am um, and so that's the purpose of this video. Um, I'm going to try, you know, not to make it too long. I just have a few questions. I've written them down here so I don't lose track of what I want to say. Um, and these are, you know, probably the most popular questions, if you will, you know, like uh, things I've heard a couple of times, you know, a question I've heard a couple of times, that sort of thing. Um, and so I'm just going to jump right in go through the questions, give you my answers, and I'm actually going to uh, invite you to let me know if you have other questions that you would like answered. Um, you know, I am, like I say, I'm a very private person. However, you know, my personal life is different. What I do on my channel, what I do with my work, if you have questions about that, then yeah, that's not going to be a problem. I'd love to answer your questions. So, First question, why I don't show my face, okay? Um, well, I don't show my face on camera because, first of all, um, again, I'm kind of private. I don't like to be out there online. I don't even like taking pictures. Um, so, you know, there's, there's that element to it. But with the readings, with the channel in particular, why I don't show my face is because, for me, it's mostly about the message of the cards. It's about the cards. It's not about me. It's not about my face. It's not about any of that. Okay. It's just about the cards and just about the messages of the cards. Um, I also find that, you know, it's a good way to help you learn if you're interested in tarot. If you just can focus on the cards. If I hold a card up and I point to different details on it and all of that, it's a lot easier to just focus on the card, take away the message, take away details and everything like that, as opposed to me being on camera and then the card being something, you know, small over here. Um, it's, of course, personal preference. Um, every reader really has their own style and you do have to do what works for you. This is just what works for me for the time being. Who knows? I may change it up. Um, I tried, you know, the being on camera a while ago and also found that it was a little bit distracting for me. Because when you're on camera, you do get subconscious and you start thinking, oh, my hair doesn't look great and that doesn't look really cold dog, right? And you kind of drift over what I do, uh, drift away from the message, you know, or you're not focused on it as much as you should be or could be. And so that's basically the main reasons uh, why I don't show my face on camera when I do readings uh, on YouTube, okay? Um, in private readings, yes, you see me because that's a one-on-one -on -one situation and you do have to see me. I mean, I see you in terms of who you are and your experience and all of that. So it's only fair that you get to see me. Um, and of course, it's a private session. So you do get to have that one on one time with me, get to see who I am, get a better idea of who I am. OK, sometimes I share stories um, with um, people who come to me for private readings. Like I say, I'm a very private person, but if I feel 
that a personal story of mine will help that person I'm reading for, then I will share, okay, that story, I'm not uh, too shy or selfish or anything like that, okay? It's just really, when it comes to YouTube, just focusing on the cards, just focusing on the message of the cards, that's really what it is. Um, okay, do I use reversals? Uh, I have not used reversals since I started studying or reading the tarot. Um, I find that you can get the messages you need to get out of a reading, whether you're reading them all upright or whether you're incorporating reversals. Again, each reader has their own style and they do what works for them. For me, I felt like, honestly, I could get everything out of a reading without having to use reversals. Reversals can add layers to reading. Uh, some people, they, you know, they say they add negativity to the reading because if you have really positive cards and they're reversed, then that means the opposite, and so there's going to be bad cards. Um, that's not necessarily true. It does add layers to a reading. It doesn't have to be bad. Okay, again, tarot is not good or bad. Tarot is a tool for us to get insight, okay, and it provides information. That information can be easy to take and can be happy and whatever. Or the information can be a little bit challenging, but it's still good because it gives us a heads up. It gives us a better understanding of what's going on. And it gives us direction on how to handle, okay, complicated or touchy situations. Because life is not all about the positive, unfortunately. We have ups and downs. We have different experiences we have to go through. They're not all good. And so same thing. It's just information, okay? And the purpose of it is always to help. It's always to give insight. We choose what we want to do with that information. That's a different question I'm going to get to. Uh, but we choose what we do with that information. We can use it or we can ignore it. It's still our choice, okay? But that being said, um, I have been guided to use reversals uh, with the traditional deck, okay, with the Rider Wake Rider Weight deck. Um, not all decks can be read reversed, in my experience at least, or they don't speak to me as much if I try to use reversals. I've tried it before um, because, you know, I don't like to, I like to check myself or test myself, you know, test what I believe and what I feel like um, you have this opinion in terms of reversals aren't necessary. Okay. Um, but I do like to check every now and again because you go through different experiences, you hopefully learn in the process, and so sometimes your, your beliefs change or your opinions change, so I'd like to test. Uh, and I've tried a couple of times in the past, you know, with certain decks, and they did not want to be read reversed. They just did not want to talk to me reversed. <laughs> but with this deck, with the classic, with the traditional right or wait, for some reason, it wants to be read reversed, okay? So I'm going to incorporate reversals in my readings as well and see where that takes us. Um, it's a really, you know, I have a really funny story about that because um, my guides have been talking to me and saying, yeah, you should you should look into reversals, you should use reversals. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll study because I like to, you know, be sure of what I'm doing or have a clue of what I'm doing, not just jump in and guess. That's not a good thing to do uh, when you're reading for other people. Um, and so I said, yeah, okay, I'll study, I'll look into it, I'll practice a little bit, and then I'll start using reversals. And um, if you've been watching... My readings, if you've watched last week's readings, um, with the, for work and finance, there was, I think, one sign in particular uh, where, or a couple of times, was it? I don't remember now, but there was a card that popped up reverse, which is impossible because I'm very, very particular about all the cards in my deck being upright, okay? Um, and so it was like my guide saying, there you go, you're doing it now, okay? So it's kind of funny for me, but okay, so that's why I haven't been using reversals until now uh, because I felt, you know, I didn't feel like something was missing or I couldn't get all the information I needed out of a reading. Um, I didn't need to use them, okay? Um, but I will start using them now because I've been asked to uh, subtly and then not so subtly. Um, okay, next question. How do I read tarot cards or what is an intuitive tarot card reader? Because I say I'm, I'm an intuitive card reader, okay? What that means is, you know, again, people read differently, okay? And again, everyone has their own style. Everyone does what works for them. Um, when I do a reading, when I read cards, when I read the tarot, 
the tarot has a certain way to it, okay? You have certain meanings to the cards, you have a certain way uh, to interpret the cards, um, there's a backstory to it you need to be familiar with, okay, because it adds to your readings and so on and so forth. It has rules, okay, basically. Um, and what I do, because you do go off the traditional meanings, you do, do go off, you know, the, the right way to read them according to the rules of reading tarot and all that. But you do use your intuition in terms of how you connect the cards together, in terms of when it's one meaning and not another. So at the end of the day, um, most card readers are, or most tarot card readers are intuitive card readers because yes, you start off with a traditional meaning um, that you stick to or that you start from, but then your intuition comes in, your guides come in, and then they give you new meanings, different layers, different combinations, different meanings, depending on how you combine the cards and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, an intuitive card reader is really one that adds their intuition in the mix. Uh, and it's not just about the strict meanings, okay? Um, I have seen cases, you know, and it's fine, you learn, okay, I'm not judging anyone, but I have seen cases or, or readers where they just stick to the same meanings over and over again. Um, and maybe they're just getting started, maybe they're just studying tarot, and so they haven't really kind of, they don't have that confidence to kind of branch out and bring in their own input to the cards. Um, but that's where I want to, you know, make that difference, differenti differentiation. Uh, I haven't had my coffee today, so. Um, but yeah, this is a fun pen my mom gave me. <laughs> so I, like to, I like to do fun stuff, or stuff that makes me funny, well, makes me laugh. Um, so yeah, that's basically the difference between, you know, sticking to the meanings and just using those over and over again. Like the strength card, you just say, okay, you, you have to be strong, or it's inner strength. Cool. But it can be so much more, you know what I mean? Or the three of swords, heartache, heartbreak, breakups. It's so much more, okay, depending on context, depending on the cards around it, depending on, you know, the type of question you're asking, and so on and so forth, okay? So, at the end of the day, everyone is an intuitive tarot card reader if they kind of branch out and bring in their intuition and they, you know, learn and grow uh, by doing that. Um, why don't shuffle on camera? Well, honestly, because no one really watches anyone shuffle. It's boring to watch someone shuffle. Um, and you just skip through it anyway, don't you? So I find, you know, that people asking, you know, why don't you ever shuffle on camera? It's like they're saying, how do I know that you're not just taking cards out of the deck and you're laying them out yourself to create uh, an intentional story, okay? Uh, so if that's the case, you know, if someone doubts a reader, if they don't really shuffle or if they don't see them shuffle, maybe they're not shuffling, okay, or stuff like that, um, then maybe you don't really trust that reader uh, or maybe there's trust issues or um, I don't know, whatever reason, you know, but um, for me, it's a process, you know, I shuffle, I meditate, I medita meditate upon the question, I meditate upon the person, talk to my guides, and as I'm shuffling, actually my guides start talking to me. So it can take a little while until I'm ready to lay the cards down because I'm already getting the story, uh, even before I lay out the cards. Um, so it can take a few minutes, you know, so, and there's no point in me filming that because you're just gonna skip through it anyway. It's like, there's no, you know, uh, innovative, different, type of shuffling that I'm doing, I'm just shuffling the cards, okay? Um, and it, it just takes a while, so that's why I don't shuffle on camera. Um, so that's that question. Okay, how I got started with tarot? Well, it was a while ago now, I think it's been over 10 years. Yeah, it's over 10 years. Um, I was in high school. And I know I, I look like I'm in high school, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay, I haven't been in high school in, in over 10 years. Um, yeah, and um, I was back home because uh, I'm actually, um, I'm not from the UK. I'm from Romania, actually. That's something not a lot of people know about me. Uh, and I moved to the UK a few years ago. Um, but back home, you didn't have access to a lot of, you know, stuff like this, like tarot cards and all of that. Uh, or if you did, you didn't have access where I was from. 
so I don't know. Um, there's different interests that people have, and so this is this was not a big interest. Like people need to be stocked up on tarot cards. Um, and so I was walking by, I liked books, and I liked um, bookstores. <laughs> uh, and so as a hobby, I would just go through bookstores everywhere just to look at the books, what they have, um, anything new, anything like that. Okay, so um, I passed by a bookstore at some point, and they had tarot cards in the window. I don't have them around me, actually, but they weren't really tarot cards. They were like reprints. Uh, on something like very small, like uh, playing cards, okay, but a little wider. Uh, the print wasn't great, uh, and um, they had a little defect on it here and there, but um, I was really interested. I was really drawn to it, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to buy this and see where it is. Um, previous to that, uh, I had been, you know, playing around with reading cards, well, playing cards, reading playing cards, um, dreams, and premonitions and all of that, and uh, my grandmother tried to teach me to read uh, tea leaves and, and coffee grains or whatever, um, but I was really young when she tried, and so a lot of it didn't stick, uh, and then, you know, you get into school, you can't spend as much time with grandparents and so on, so kind of, but yeah, she managed to teach me to read playing cards, so I did that for a while, uh, and it's just something that I've always been into, it's something that has always made sense to me. Um, so when I saw the tarot, I said, okay, cool, what is this then? And so I just started to study it. Um, no clue what it was. Uh, I just had one book and these cards, and you just have to learn. You just have to practice, 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 same as anything else. You could read all the books in the world and have the, th the, the theory, but you have to practice to really understand. And also you have to practice to come up with your system, with your way of relating to the cards. A tarot deck, in my experience at least, it's a companion, okay? You work together. You don't tell it what to do. You don't tell it what to show you. It doesn't have any power on you. It's not that kind of a relationship. You teach each other. You learn from each other. Hold on, excuse me. Sorry about that. There was someone at the door. But I got up, so I managed to pick up the cards that I was talking about as well. So these are the cards that I actually started out with. Um, okay, I'm going to show you just to compare. Like this is a regular tarot deck, and this is the cards that I started out with. Um, and, you know, if you know the cards, if you know the, the regular cards, what they look like, um, you know, you can see that the, the print on these is not excellent. You know, colors are kind of wishy-washy. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny, but it's, it's what got me started at the end of the day, so I'm grateful to have them. I went back home to visit my mom, and I had to find them. <laughs> I said, you know, I have to find them uh, and show them to people. Because a lot of people have asked me, you know, how did you get started with tarot? And um, it's like, you know what I mean? It's just they're really, really cute. Okay, that's what I, that's what I think. They're really cute. Um, yeah, and they have a couple of cards that, you know, the the writing goes on the card where it shouldn't, and um, you know, the, this is the Wheel of Fortune, kind of wishy-washy, lots of grays in them. But, um, hold on, found the, no, that's the seven. Never mind. Uh, yeah, these are the cards that I started out with, very cute, and uh, I still use them to practice, um, because I still, you know, I still love the cards very much, okay, even though they're not proper cards. Uh, they didn't come in a box, they didn't come in anything, they just came with a book. Um, okay, so that's that one. Um... And that's how I got started with tarot. And then I just, you started to, you start to practice, you start to pull a card for everything. Uh, journaling definitely helps, you know, like you get, you know, you write down a question, you pull some cards to see what you get, and then you write your own ideas of what that could mean uh, based on the meanings you have in a book or whatever you work with. And then you just keep your eyes open and see what actually happens. And then that kind of gives you an idea of, okay, well, that card showed up and this happened. So there's, you know, the connection there, and that's just how you get started. Uh, if you are getting started, I would definitely recommend, you know, start with the cards, learn them upright, and then go into reversals if you feel that's right for you, okay? Because it's definitely easier to just focus on the one direction <laughs> as opposed to having to flip things around and remember two sets of meanings or whatever. Um, so that's that.
Okay, do I read just tarot cards? Uh, no, I do not. We kind of touched upon that um, already. So I started with uh, reading playing cards. And a lot of people that I've seen on YouTube now read playing cards as if they were tarot cards. Uh, like the Queen of Spades would be the Queen of Swords. Okay, so they kind of, um, and that is, a, you know, it is a way to read the, the playing cards as well. If you don't have tarot cards, that's a way to do it. Uh, for me, I actually, I don't even know. <laughs> the information kind of found its way to me in terms of old ways of reading the playing cards. I don't even know how I came across them. Um, I think they were in a notebook that my mom had when she was in high school and she had a friend who was a gypsy and that friend gave her some meanings or something like that. It was very kind of a, what, what is this? And she goes, oh, I, I have no idea. That's my handwriting, but I don't know what it is. Um, and that's how I started uh, reading cards. So that was playing cards. And then uh, I had dreams of all sorts and premonitions of all sorts and um, intuition was very high. Um, then I found tarot cards. Uh, a little while after I found oracle cards. A bunch of oracle cards here if you could see. I can't move the camera, but if you could see, it's like, it's like, and most of them are Doreen Virtue. Um, and I just keep them here handy. These are the cards that I go to in readings, you know, the life purpose oracle cards and dolphins and mermaids and um, Archangel Guidance, and it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, Oracle decks that I keep handy. 13, 14. <laughs> I got decks all over. Um, but yeah, uh, so I guess you could say I've read playing cards. Use my intuition for a lot of it, actually. Someone could talk to me about a situation, and I could tell them exactly what's going on. And just, you know, just by what they were saying to me, what I was getting off of them. Um, and a lot of it was my guys, I suppose, in terms of, okay, so that's going on, that's going on, that's going on, and that's how it's going to end. Okay, so I was just able to do that. And I started to do that again in my psychic readings, where I look into a situation, you focus on someone, and then you just get information about what's going on for them. So I started to do that again. Um... How did I learn the tarot? Okay, well, uh, we went through that. Lots of study, lots of research. Um, when I am passionate about something, I just go all out, okay? I learn, I study everything there is on the subject. Uh, I practice, practice, practice. I uh, see, you know, what other people are doing, learn from them as well. Um, so when I started my, my uh, before I started my YouTube channel, I actually, for a few months, um, I was following other people on YouTube, and um, when I got to the point where I said, that's not actually what it means, or that's not what I would have said when looking at a video, um, I decided, you know what, um, then I should have my own channel, and I should have my own say in terms of how I interpret the cards since I'm doing it anyway. And, you know, of course, I was like... Um, Who's going to, you know, you think about it, like, who's going to watch your channel or who's going to care enough or um, do I really have something to say? Do I really have something helpful to say or I'm just going to, you know, am I going to waste people's time? So there's a lot of anxiety going into it, but I was really guided to do it. So I've learned not to question my guys. I've learned the hard way and uh, not to doubt what they're saying, not to doubt what they're telling me. Um, so I just I just started and and here we are, like. A year and a half later, or almost a year and a half, I don't know. Um, and it's been an amazing journey and very, very much unbelievable for me. It's very humbling uh, at, and, and exalting at the same time. So I'm just getting started. It's very exciting. Um, do I teach tarot? Okay, well, I will be. I plan to start tutorials this week. And I'm also going to write uh, a course um again it's gonna be i think it's gonna be for for beginners and then medium level or something like that and then kind of see where it goes from there um the tutorials on youtube um i'm definitely gonna be starting this week i'm gonna just start to talk about the cards okay just to describe them just to give you some key meanings uh just to try and um 
talk about what they would mean in an, in an actual reading or in a love reading or in a finance reading or stuff like that. And hopefully those will be helpful, okay? Because I've, I learned watching other people. I learned from other people. Um, whether it was, oh yeah, this is something I need to remember or whether it was, um, I don't think I should be doing this. Um, I learned, okay? So, so hopefully that's gonna be something fun and useful, helpful, okay? Um, how to get most of a, most out of a reading with me, private readings. Okay, well, in my experience, how to get most out of a reading is to be specific with your question. Um, just try to have one question in mind that's clear. And then to come with, you know, come with an open mind to the reading. Uh, don't have any expectations because that what that means is if you don't hear something that you thought you were supposed to, then you just disregard the reading completely. And that may not be something you should be doing. You know what I mean? It could be a really valuable reading for you, but because you're not open to it, you're just going to throw it away. Um, take it all in. Let it sit with you for a while. Don't jump into criticizing right away. I always say if you knew what was going to happen or if you knew what was happening, you wouldn't come to a reading anyway. You wouldn't ask for a reading anyway. So keep an open mind. You don't know everything. Um, and myself included, I get personal readings as well, and I really... Even though I'm a, I'm, I'm a reader myself, uh, and so when I see cards, I get an idea of what they could mean. I'm, when I go into a reading, I'm the client. I'm not a reader. I'm not the expert. I'm there to learn. I'm there to receive guidance for my question. Whether I like the guidance or not, whether it makes sense initially or not, I think about it. I take it all in, let it sit for a little while, and eventually it does make sense, okay? If you go to a reader who is passionate about what they do and they truly want to help you, the guidance always makes sense and the guidance always helps, okay? Um, and something else that I've seen doing private readings is if you come to a reading uh, and you try to, if you formulate a very general question or trying to encompass, you know, what's coming up for me in the future? That's too wide of a subject, you know what I mean? Um, it's important that we are specific in terms of, okay, what's coming up in my career or what's coming up in my love life or how is this situation going to be resolved, okay, or something like that because when we leave a situation, when we have a question that's too open, so to speak, we receive guidance, but it may be that we don't know where to place it. We don't know how to use it because we weren't specific enough with our question, and so we got the answers, but they may not be specific because we weren't specific with our question. So I always try to, you know, go back to people and ask uh, for a clear question and I always say what is it that you truly want to know here because sometimes what we tend to do is we have the question and then we try to rephrase it the way we think you know uh, we're gonna get the most out of it or the way we think it sounds better or no what is it you truly want to know okay just say the words that's what you truly want to know don't be afraid of being judged. Don't be afraid. Of course, when you come to a reading with me, I don't know about other readers, and I'm not talking about other readers, but when you come to a reading with me, I do not judge. Just as a person, I don't judge anyone, and let alone people who come to me for guidance. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. No, you can't do that. Um, so don't be afraid, you know, of being judged. Don't be afraid of what it sounds like. Don't be afraid of, you know, sounding stupid, or that's another thing. You know, I, I, I didn't have, I had a question, but I, it sounded stupid. Don't do that to yourself. Ask the question that you truly want answers to. That's what you're going to get answers to, okay? Uh, background information. I don't absolutely need background information. Sometimes it can be confusing, actually. There's too much. Uh, and it's because, you know, it's still one point of view into the situation. And so that can be confusing for me trying to untangle what's really going on because I'm looking at it through your point of view and so that can be a little bit confusing. So a little background information uh, is useful in terms of you know me being able to tailor your answers to your actual situation as opposed to saying this could mean this and this and this. You're going to have to let me know what it is, okay? Uh, like if you're asking about another person, it would be useful for me to know if you're a couple or if you want to be a couple, okay? Or if you've been on again, off again, that would be useful. If you were to go into too much detail about it in terms of 
10 years back until now, that's going to be complicated and it's going to be too much information and it's not going to actually be useful for the reading. Um, but main thing, main thing is to keep an open mind. If you ask for the guidance, be open to the guidance and it will make sense and it will help. Okay. Right. How do I work with tarot? Okay, so tarot for me is not just about fortune telling. You don't go to someone and say, this is going to happen, end of story. That's not what it is. Um, for me, I use it as a coaching tool, okay, if you will. Um, it's like life coaching at the end of the day. It's like a counseling session because... If you, if you read on my website, my welcome page or the about me page or anything like that, you can see that I'm a very firm believer in that we have, we have free will, okay? Nothing is set in stone. I have not come across a reading since I've started doing readings and, until now where I had to say, look, I'm not seeing anything that you could do about the situation. It's just not in your hands. I've never had that, okay? There's always something that can be done. There's always something that we can do, okay? Um, and so that's how I work with tarot, okay? It is, it's giving you potential outcomes based on the way things are going, okay? I always say that in private, in private readings. So it's saying, okay, based on the way things have been and the way things are going, this is where it's going to go, or this is where it's tending to go, okay? Because that's where the cards are pointing, that's where the energies are, are leading you to. Um, however, if you don't like that outcome, you can change it just by changing your approach, just by changing your attitude. It's as simple as that. It's like if you continue to walk, it's like sat nav. If you continue to, to drive on this road, you're going to have a block up ahead. There's, there's traffic, you're going to be stuck there. What do you do? You look for an alternative route and then you don't get stuck in traffic so that bad outcome doesn't really happen. Okay, so that's what it is. On the same hand, okay, this is really important, on the same hand, if we get a positive outcome, if we get an outcome that we want to see happen, the outcome is, again, based on the way things are going and you keeping things up and taking in the guidance, this is where you will end up. So if you want to end up there, you have to keep things going and you have to take the guidance. If you don't, if you just stop doing the work because you say, oh, I got a really positive outcome in the cards, so I know it's going to happen, I can just chill. It may not happen because you're not doing the work that would have gotten you to the outcome, okay, if that makes sense. Um, or it may happen, but to a lesser degree or not as great as it could have been if you kept things up, kept, kept up the work, uh, and take, taken in the guidance, okay? Our free will is a gift, but it's a responsibility at the same time. I always say that, okay? It's a gift in terms of we can always change whatever we don't like. It is a responsibility in terms of we have to change something if we don't like it. We can't just sit there and hope or, you know, I don't mean, you know, don't hope for things, but I mean just hoping, you know, just saying, oh, I hope this changes. No, you have to change it. You have the power to change it. So if you want to change it, you have to use that power. Okay, so it's like the magician and manifestation. We always manifest whether we want something and we're working towards that actively Okay, we're manifesting, but also when we don't want something to happen and we worry about it and we stress about it and we're afraid of it, we're manifesting that as well. So it's up to us to take our power in terms of, okay, I'm aware that I'm manifesting, so I need to focus on what I want to manifest and just take that charge, you know, take that control. So that's how I see tarot, any other form of divination. It gives you additional insight. You can choose what you want to do with it. You can choose to ignore it or you can choose to use it. Okay. Up to you. It's always up to us. We have free will. Okay. Double check things. Don't just take things at face value. I always say this as well in, in YouTube readings and everywhere. You know, this is just the way I see things now. It's going to be different for everyone. It's up to you to assess your own situation and see if this information fits in with that if the information helps with your situation, but don't just take things like this is going to happen, okay, just because I say it. Um, it doesn't work that way. It really, really doesn't, okay? So we always have our free will, 
we are in charge and that's what I'm trying to do with the tarot to teach people uh, that we can be in charge we can change any situation good or bad uh, and we just need to be aware we just need to be present and then just look at things for what they are make the choices make the decisions okay take responsibility at the end of the day okay and that could be daunting because it is you know work um, to take responsibility of, a, of your own life um, but it can be a really beautiful and empowering thing at the same time and that's what we're gonna you know we have to focus on right um, do I follow other readers on YouTube I do um, Elisa Jean tarot card reader uh, readings uh, Lisa is one of my closest friends and I've been following her I think since I started following people on YouTube um, and now we're really cl close friends and uh, love her very much we have different styles of communication just because I'm a Pisces and she's a Gemini but we're, v we're very much on the same page in terms of the type of reader we are we want to help we want to make a difference um, and we want to empower people so that much we're very similar okay and that much um, and I would definitely, you know, recommend either following her or even going to her for private readings. I'm not about, you know, competing with other people and I need to keep my clients to myself or whatever. No, you know, I'm here to help. If you resonate with me, if I make sense to you, if you connect with me, uh, great. If not, lovely, go ahead and find someone that you do connect with at the end of the day. As long as people are getting the guidance and the help that they're looking for everyone's happy okay so that's my view on that um, I'm not focused on competition or it's just really not about that okay it's just about helping and guiding and at the end of the day where you find your guidance that works for you that's where you find your guidance okay I also watch uh, Nicholas Nicholas Tarot I'm, I don't know Nicholas if you google Nicholas if you search it on YouTube he's really really good uh, and I've been following him as well. I watched Tarot um, with Tilly, okay? She's great. She's actually the first person I started watching on YouTube. She's an amazing woman. Um, I haven't really, you know, reached out or we haven't really connected personally in any kind of circumstance, but I always follow her and she always inspires me. Um, uh, and um, so that's, that's Tilly. Uh, I watch Stormy Grace. She's a friend as, as well. Uh, she does horoscopes, astrology. <sighs> Who else do I follow? Um, Pamela Giorgio. Watch Pamela. Um, who else? Let me just let me just check for a minute <laughs> in my subscription list. Um, Angel Souls. I watch Angel Souls. I like Michelle. Um, again, it's different kind of work. Okay, it's different kind of work um, that everyone does, which is really, really cool. Um, Audrey Allison, a bunch of other people. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, even though they're all readers, they have a different style, even to my own. Um, but they all make a positive difference, you know what I mean? They all make a positive contribution. And I've learned and been inspired by all of them and continue to, 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 to be inspired. Um, okay, one more question. Okay, what I think about uh, people hitting the uh, dislike button or uh, leaving bad comments or rude comments or anything like that. Okay, my, I have a theory. Uh, people who leave dislikes uh, on, first of all, content that is free uh, and generalized and you announce that I find that these the people who do this expect that reading to apply to them personally and if you were to go into a reading and say this is gonna to apply to everyone this is gonna make sense to everyone it's just the way it is then yeah people can hit the dislike button because no hold on you said it was gonna make sense to me you said it was applying is gonna to apply to me and it didn't so I'm gonna hit dislike fair enough but once you go into a reading and you say look people seriously this is for thousands of people it cannot apply to everyone. It's impossible, okay? It's just impossible because there's thousands of people. Everyone's going through their own little thing. Everyone has their own little experience. You know what I mean? Uh, we're all different. 
it is impossible to come up with a message unless you sit there and talk for days at a time. It's impossible to come up with a message that applies to everyone equally in the same way. Uh, so that's what I think, you know, that people go into a reading and, um, and just hit that dislike button because I think they expect it to apply to them, even though you tell them it's not going to apply to everyone, seriously. Um, uh, but I think that's what it is at the end of the day. Because for me, I've, I don't think I've ever hit that dislike button, even if I watched a reading where I felt, well, this kind of was a waste of time. I still respect the work of that person. You know, it takes a lot. That's what people don't realize. I feel like uh, some people just take things for granted and um, they just don't, they don't have that compassion or empathy to think in terms of it takes a lot to do this. You know what I mean? And if it's, even if it's general readings, they're still draining, okay, to connect to source, to the divine, to the universe, whatever you want to call it, to deliver messages. It is draining. And if it, even if it's a 10 minute reading, it's still draining. So um, I don't think, you know, the people are capable of thinking about things that way. Okay. Uh, I always respect people's work, whether I like it or not, you know, whether I like that work or not, I respect the fact that they took the time and that's what they want to put out there. That's what they believe in. Okay. And I, that's what I respect. I said, okay, fine. Even if that message does not make sense to me, even if that message does not apply to me in any kind of a way. I appreciate, because I can see they took the time, I can see they made an effort, I can see they believe in what they do, I can see they're invested. It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, that's different. Um, but I've never hit that dislike button in my life, and I don't think I will. Okay, because I respect the work that goes into it. Um, bad comments. Okay, well, Here's the thing with that. Um, I'm a very open, kind, generous person. I always give people the benefit of the doubt. I always think of people in terms of maybe they're just having a bad day, or maybe they're just going through a rough time, okay, and they feel the need to lash out. And so I don't uh, take things personally, and I don't react or jump to defend myself. I don't have to explain myself. I don't have to I'm not here to convince anyone of anything, okay? This is my message. Take it or leave it. That's what it is. Um, and so I'm not going to jump on people and, you know, start having arguments. And I'm, I'm just not that person, okay? I'm, I just don't do that. Um, at the same time, though, I'm not going to accept to be treated in a way that I don't deserve, okay? So if I'm taking my time and, and putting in the effort and all of that, and someone's being rude, I'm just going to block that person. Okay? I'm not even go, going to go into it and try to explain or try to convince them of, um, no, I don't, I can feel the energy behind a comment and I can feel if there's something that I can say to help that person or if they're, they're just unreachable. Okay. In which case I just block that person or hide their comments or I can't help them. Okay, so I'm not going to take in that energy because it just latches on. Okay, so I'm just not going to have it. I'm, that's it. I'm not being mean. I'm not being vengeful. I'm not. I'm just saying, you, this is my space. Okay, this is my community of people. This is who we are. This is how we work together. This is the energy that we're bringing to this channel. This does not fit. I'm sorry. Okay, and that's that's all that is. Um, and that's what just with rude comments where you can tell that they're coming from an ego place and you can tell that they're just said to make that person feel better about themselves or superior about them, about who they are by hurting someone else or whatever. Okay. Um, I could explain that to this. I, I just, there's no point, you know, I, that's not what I'm about. That's not what I do. Uh, you know trying to convince people that I'm whatever and no. This is, it's almost like you're saying, this is my home. I welcome you, I welcome everyone, okay? But if you come into my home and you make a big mess just because you feel like it, and I took the time to arrange everything just this nice for everyone and to make it welcoming and to make it, you know, nourishing and all of that, and you come in and you just make a big mess and you just break stuff or whatever for no reason, then I'm going to ask you to leave, and that's what it is. That's it. 
you know, no arguments, no drama. No, I hate drama. <laughs> I'm not a drama person. I just cannot stand it. I firmly believe that you can get through any situation and any discomfort and any whatever by communicating with clarity, with integrity, with diplomacy. I believe you can get through anything. It doesn't have to turn into a big fight. It doesn't have to turn into drama. It doesn't have to turn into whatever. I'm just not that kind of person. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I think about bad comments, rude comments, mean comments, just for the sake of being mean. I've had comments where, you know, people, you know, write, this doesn't make sense to me. And that's fine. And I go back and I say, yes, there is a general reading. So, of course, it makes sense. It is a possibility that it doesn't apply to you. I said that in the beginning. And watch your moon sign, watch your rising sign. If that doesn't make, doesn't make sense, then maybe, you know, the messages don't resonate with you this month. Maybe try again next month or go find another reader. Okay. I always say that there's no, you know, bitterness there or anything. Um, people who misunderstand and then they leave a comment. I can tell that there's something there that they misunderstood that they took in a different way that was intended. And that's a situation where I would go into it and I said, okay, I think, you know, this may have happened here, but actually it was supposed to be this. And that's where they say, oh, okay, yeah, that, okay, that now makes sense. I've also had people come to me and say, this is a load of whatever. <laughs> uh, it makes no sense. You're just sitting there and making stuff up. And then a week later, I've had, it was probably just one person come back and say, I'm sorry you said that. Actually, things turned out the way you did. Or I could see those energies that you could talk, we were talking about in my life. Um, and so I'm sorry for my previous comment. Respect to that person because they had an open mind, okay? They didn't resonate with the message and they, yes, they kind of rejected it at first, uh, more, you know, uh, sternly than necessary, but anyway. Uh, but then they were big enough to come back and say, okay, I'm sorry. So respect those people. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of, oh, another thing is I don't like it when people start having fights on a channel in the comment section. Um, I've only have had it happen once on my channel. I had to block both, both those people having a fight because there was just nastiness. That was just unnecessary. That's not what the channel is about. I'm sorry. Okay. That's not what the channel is about. You can email each other and, and be rude to each other. You can call each other. You can meet each other up. That's, yeah, that's your story. Okay. This is my channel. This is what it is. It's not, what you're doing is not part of my channel. So I'm sorry. Take it somewhere else. That's all that is, okay? No judgment, no bitterness, no mean energy, no nothing, okay? Very, very healthy boundaries, healthy ground rules. Okay, these are the ground rules. If you're going to be in my home, you abide them. We all get along and we have a beautiful experience. You do not. You disrespect me and everyone else coming into my home. I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave. That's all that is, okay? So I think it actually turned into a bit of a long video. <laughs> um, but um, if you're interested, if you want to just get to know me better, um, you're going to watch it. And uh, hopefully it's going to help. It's going to do something good for you. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it at this. Um, you can write if you have any other questions about my work. Um, I'm not going to get into questions about my personal life if anyone has questions about my personal life, because that's not what matters here. That's not what, what is important here. It's just about the work. It's just about the, the channel and the tarot and all of that. Um, so if you have any questions about that, uh, let me know. I'm going to write them down. And then um, when I have a few, I'm going to try and do another video. Okay. If this is something that works for you, if this is something that you want to see again. Okay. Um, but yeah, there you have it. Uh, this is uh, who I am. Hopefully you have a little better, small, oh well, a better idea of who I am and where I'm coming from. Um, and hopefully you feel like you know me a little bit better <laughs> uh, if you want to, of course. So, okay, this is it. I'm going to end the video now. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it is useful for you. Uh, let me know. Give me some feedback. Okay, as usual, you know, I like to ask for feedback because it helps me grow as well. Um, but yeah, enjoy the video. Uh, let me know if you have any, any other questions and stay tuned. I'm going to get to work <laughs> for um, uh, weekly posts 
uh, on my channel for the, for this week, which is the 13th of March. Um, and then just carry on with work. Okay, so uh, take care. Thank you for being here. Truly, truly, thank you for all your support. It means a lot to me. Um, I feel like I say it too much, but I truly mean it. Every, every single time I say it, I mean it. Um, and so it's important for me to be grateful. It's important for me to, to let you know that I'm grateful. Okay, so that's why I say it all the time. Um, and yeah, there you go. I'll talk to you again in the next video. Okay, so take care. Bye-bye.